Welcome back everyone to The Great Dyings, a five-part video series on the five mass extinctions. Last time in part one, we took a look at the freezing temperatures and global anoxia that caused the Ordovician Silurian extinction. Today we will be looking at the extremely controversial Late Devonian mass extinction, which took place approximately 375 million years ago, about 16 million years before the end of the Devonian period. This tragic event struck Earth at a very interesting time during Earth's history from an evolutionary standpoint. So, before we look at this terrible event, we must first understand the world it took place in. The Devonian period is the fourth period of the Paleozoic Era and of the Phanerozoic Eon. It is also considered to be the first period of the Late Paleozoic subsystem. It lasted for around 60 million years, from around 419 million years ago to 359 million years ago. It was preceded by the Silurian period and followed by the Carboniferous period. The Devonian period is often nicknamed the Age of Fish due to the incredibly diverse and bizarre fish and marine life that swam in its seas. During the Devonian period, the Ammonites, a group of cephalopods that slightly resemble the modern-day Nautilus, diversified and became one of the many rulers of these seas. The Ammonites were an incredibly well-adapted and resilient group of creatures who would go on to populate the oceans for the next 350 million years until they would be wiped out by the asteroid that ended the Cretaceous. The seafloors were populated by many familiar enduring species such as the Brachiopods, Graptolites, and of course the icons of the Paleozoic, the Trilobites. Tabulate and Brugos corals made up coral reefs in more shallow waters. One of the more interesting groups of animals during this period were the placoderms. The placoderms were a group of jawed fish characterized by their armored plates. They first evolved during the Silurian period as small, irrelevant animals such as Cheminolepsis. However, in the strange seas of the Devonian, they would evolve to become the kings of the age of fish. You probably heard of the most ferocious of these sea monsters the Dunkleosteus. Named Dunkel's Bone after the scientist who found it, this prehistoric beast has been estimated to be anywhere from 3.3 to 10 meters long, 11 to 33 feet. Recent studies, however, have put it on the lower end of the size spectrum. Regardless, though, the infamous terrifying fish was the apex predator of the late Devonian. However, it wasn't the Dunkleosteus's intimidating size and appearance that gave it its edge. It was the armored plates, specifically around its mouth. These signature placoderm features were turned into a deadly weapon. Massive thick plates surrounded the and jutted out from the fish's jaws. These pseudo-teeth would have been able to deliver a blow of 36,000 kilograms or 80,000 pounds per square inch of force. To put that into perspective, it could have bitten you in half like a marshmallow. 400 million years ago, the secret to the Dunkleosteus rule of tyranny was the same trait that its ancestors had evolved to protect themselves from apex predators many millions of years before. These once weak, tiny vertebrates became the unrivaled rulers of the Devonian seas. The jawed fish had won. However, this was not the most monumentous achievement that life would make during this very peculiar period. During the late Devonian, the first tetrapods, four-legged land-living vertebrates, made the very first steps onto land. Creatures such as Tiktaalik were one of these many strange animals. Evolved from fish which developed limb-like fins, they were the true pioneers of their time. Funnily enough, it was likely the tyrannic rule of creatures like Dunkleosteus that drove these animals to find refuge on shores. Arthropods had first crawled out of the seas a few million years ago, but these were the first vertebrates to become at least partially terrestrial. However, unlike their amniotic descendants, these amphibians had extremely thin skin and eggshells, this meant they were still tied to the water to keep themselves hydrated and for reproduction. It would take another few million years before the first reptiles, equipped with amniotic eggshells, thick skin, and powerful hearts, would evolve from these curious fish and truly dominate the terrestrial world. During the Devonian period, the modern-day continents of Australia, Antarctica, South America, and Africa were still joined together into the all-too-familiar supercontinent of Gondwana in the Southern Hemisphere. Accompanying Gondwana in the Southern Hemisphere was a paleocontinent constructed of Baltica and Laurentia named Euramerica. Other land masses such as Siberia dotted the rest of the Southern Hemisphere and some of the Northern. 
In between Gondwana and Euramerica lay two seas known as the Prototethys Ocean and the Paleotethys Ocean, while the eerily familiar Panthalastic Ocean dominated the rest of the Earth. During the Devonian, around 85% of the Earth's surface was covered in water. Compared to the hot climate of the preceding Ordovician and Silurian periods, the Devonian temperatures were remarkably colder. During times of stability, the ocean temperatures could range from 27 to 30 degrees Celsius, or 80 to 85 Fahrenheit, while land temperatures were slightly cooler at around 17 degrees Celsius, or 63 Fahrenheit. Despite the mild climate, the temperatures at the poles were only slightly colder than that at the equators, which meant there were no ice caps or glaciers, at least for the majority of the period. Like many mass extinctions, we don't really know what caused the late Devonian mass extinction events. In fact, it is probably the most debated and misunderstood of all of the great dyings. Also, like most mass extinction events, it was likely caused by multiple factors coming together to form the tragedy. It began around 375 to 372 million years ago, at the end of the Frasnian Age, and proceeded through the Fomenian Age until the end of the Devonian, 359 million years ago. It took place over approximately 15 million years during the late Devonian. As I mentioned earlier, we don't exactly know what caused it, but there are a few theories. The first of these major theories suggests the possibility of an asteroid collision, similar to the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. However, this theory is often criticized in modern science for a few big reasons. If there was a major asteroid impact during the late Devonian, similar to the one that occurred at the end of the Mesozoic, then why haven't we found another crater to support this theory? Also, an asteroid impact would have affected both marine and terrestrial life almost equally, but marine life was hit way harder by the extinction than life on land. Overall, the possibility of an asteroid impact is incredibly unlikely, but it cannot be ruled out. The second of these major theories suggests that an extreme global cooling event took place eerily similar to the one that occurred during the Hernadian Age of the Ordovician, also similar to the global cooling during the end Ordovician, we don't really have an idea as to what might have caused it. This unexpected rapid cooling of the Earth would have led to the formation of glacial ice sheets, and as a result, falling sea levels. Over-sedimentation may also have resulted in global marine aquatic anoxia conditions, like the ones during the LOMEI-2. These conditions would have frozen and suffocated many of the inhabitants of the late Devonian seas. Underwater volcanism may have also caused the ocean conditions to become even more toxic. However, terrestrial life would have been relatively unaffected due to their ability to take in oxygen from the atmosphere. The last theory we will discuss today is a more recent one. It suggests that a supernova, the death of a star, may have damaged the Earth's ozone layer. The damaged ozone layer would have been unable to protect much of the life in the Devonian from harmful UV radiation. We see some indicators of this being a possibility in the fossil record. Rocks from the Devonian period contain many spores that have appeared to be scorched by UV radiation. Regardless of the cause, however, the late Devonian extinction seems to have taken place over multiple events that saw the extinction of different groups. A few more minor events may have taken place a few million years before the late Devonian extinction officially began. These events, known as the Lower Zilkov and the Taghanic events, saw the extinction of many graptolites, brachiopods, ganeotites, and corals. However, Things really began with the Kalwasser event around 372 million years ago. It led to the major extinction of many ganeotites, conodonts, corals, and trilobites on the Frasnian Fomenian border. Following it towards the end of the Devonian was the more minor Hangenberg event, which saw the disappearance of several phacopid trilobites, ganeotites, and cephalopods. Regardless of the cause or method, the late Devonian mass extinctions took a heavy toll on the marine ecosystems. Much of the unique ocean life was wiped out, including the king of the age of fish, the Dunkleosteus. Even this ferocious fish could not adapt to survive in this rapidly changing environment. The Dunkleosteus, once at the top of the Devonian food chain, was now completely wiped out. However, many tetrapods survived the extinction because the land was largely unaffected. This is a common theme we will see as we explore the later extinctions. It is the adaptable underdogs that survive these deadly events. 
the ones who can adapt fast enough to keep up with the changing environment, while the ones on top, like apex predators, are the ones that take the biggest blows, as the ecosystem holding them up crumbles. These beasts are so specialized to take advantage of their environment, that when that environment changes, they can't keep up. The late Devoni mass extinction event led to the extinction of 50 to 55 percent of all genera, 20 percent of families, and 70 to 80 percent of all Devonian life. Despite this massive loss of life, the late Devonian extinction ranks only fourth in most deadly mass extinctions. Many deep water animals, such as sharks and bony fish, survived the extinction. This is likely because difficult conditions would have, have reached deep waters as easily as shallower water. Also, the overabundance of carnage above would have given these deep water fish plenty to eat during these trying times. The seas were completely thrown off balance by this extinction, and it would take another few million years for them to recover. But when it did, these resilient sharks would dominate the Carboniferous seas. Meanwhile, life on land was, strangely, unaffected. This may be due to the amphibians' ability to draw oxygen from the air, which would have protected them from the global marine anoxia. Throughout the Carboniferous, as oxygen levels rose, the land would become more and more habitable and more and more populated. As the land became more suitable for life, the first reptiles would evolve and conquer this last frontier. There you go. That was the story of the late Devonian mass extinction events, a devastating loss of life that began 15 million years before the Carboniferous and killed off 70 to 80 percent of all Devonian life, consisting of multiple events. The extinction that saw the death of many famous species, including the grotesque Dunkleosseus. Next video, we will be exploring the most devastating mass extinction in our history, the one that took place on the Permian-Triassic border, the great mass extinction that truly earns the name, the Great Dying. But until then, thanks for watching. Please keep in mind that this is an informal source of information. While the sources used are considered reliable, this source should not be used for professional or educational purposes, except that the information presented can be confirmed by other sources or an expert slash educator.